Hey, Harley here with Team Fish, and we're at the Catfish Conference today. And uh, I've been waiting on this. I was told maybe someone from Hummingbird will be here, and we get a little bit of fine tuning done on my unit today. I've got a Helix 10, and here's Fuzzy. Hey, Fuzzy. How y'all doing? Fuzzy's going to take a look at my Helix 10, run through, and uh, do a couple little uh, sweeteners on it. He's already got it fired up here, and uh, go run through the displays and take out the junk and turn up the good on it. Uh, what you've done here is I went to sonar. I okay. don't ever mess with alarms. I leave, leave alarms alone. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go in here and just hit your button twice. We're going to come over here to, to sonar. And under what I do on sonar basically is I try to take sonar. 200's a narrow beam. You click it on there, there's both beams. And 83 is a wide beam. 83 shows you everything on the bottom. Right. I run a lot of 200 slash 83, so I got a real narrow beam going down in the cracks and crevices of the rocks, then I got my 83s a wide. Okay, so basically now you've got them both. Uh, come on down through here, switch fire. You got clear mode, max mode. Clear mode will take a lot of interference and stuff out of it, while the max mode is made for deeper water. I, I, I like it around 25 foot or less, I run clear mode. Deeper, I would put it in max mode. If you're drop shotting or you're jigging something, you might want it in max mode because it'll show your jig going up. We're down. usually dragging baits behind catfish in 35, 40 foot of water in the high river. Clear, clear mode will be fine. Clear that mode will take out a little bit of the interference. Okay. All right, something's on here. We got this something called real time sonar, which is a flasher bar going up. That's the old days of the flasher. Uh huh. If you don't like that, it's going to take it off the screen, as you can see over yeah, here. I have no need for All that. All right. Well, we're going to go in here. It's off. Okay. Now that flasher bar left. I also come down here. Something else that shows up on there all the time. You don't have any side imaging range lines. Right. So I like my lines so I know how far away something is when I look at the screen. Okay. So I'm gonna cut that on. I'm gonna come down here. To keep on coming down. Water type. There's your connected transducer. All this is gonna be said except your sensitivities when you first cut the unit on. And okay. I'll show you how to go do that. Now I've got a question for you on that. On that. Now, now with these, they come, the transducer's about that long, so I guess it is the high def yes. that comes? Okay, it'll say, the, okay. the new deucer will say basically most time it'll say mega. Here's, okay. It's not in It's here, not mega, yeah. But it'll show mega. All right. Now, color bar. That's that other little bar down the side. That we don't I cut need. it off. Now my screen's wide. Okay. You don't really need it. Temperature graph. I, that don't run, it's not enough variance. I'm going to put your temp in here. So I'm going to show you the exact temp. Okay. Pretty well you're done with sonar. Now we're going to come over here to nav. Basically, the main thing on this is when you come under chart orientation, I like running heads up. That way my boat and my map turn. And okay. always my boat's going this way, my map will follow my boat. Okay, so north. it's like looking north all right. the time. All right. Okay. No, right. Uh, Here's something that probably a lot of people don't know about, Ooh, casting rings. I do, and I'm excited about them. Casting rings, you can set anything a distance. Just for fun, we'll set this one up here about 20, 30 feet. Let's go back here, 40 feet. I'm going to have a blue waypoint, and then I'm going to have a ring, usually a green ring around my waypoint. Now, when I get to the waypoint, that ring tells me that waypoint's that far away. So you won't run over the structure that you want to fish, you fish, or yeah. you know before you get there, get ready. Once I'm inside that ring, I'm gonna get real close to the way. All right. I kind of go through and I look at some of the other stuff. Uh, north indicator is on, so I'm always gonna have an arrow on my screen to show me which way north is. If that's something that you need. All the rest of the stuff is pretty well. Set. Now I'm back up here to nav. I'm going to come over here to chart. Nothing really much you want to change on chart. Here's the big deal. If you put a hummingbird chart in here, you use a Lake Master. Yep. I can go in here. This is something that's kind of privileged to us. I can go in here and I can highlight shallow water. Say anything. We're going to say eight foot or less will show up red on my map. If the lake changes up or down, I can set it. I can go in here to depth, highlight the depth I want to fish. Say today, somebody told you that fish were biting in 20 foot of water. I set it at 20 feet. Now my variance, let's say, let's just drop it down here to two foot. 
anything from 18 to 22 feet will color green all over the lake. Anything that's unreal, that's, right? crazy. that's unreal. And anything that's 10 foot or 8 foot or less, it's going to show red. So you'll find high spots and you know the depth. Now, if the water changes, this offset, like I got a lake I fish, it drops 30 feet in the wintertime. Yeah. If I drop this thing down to 30 feet, all my contours and my depths change. Are you so down in Texas exact, or somewhere? I'm in North, uh, North Carolina. North Carolina. And okay. I fish in Tennessee in the river. They got a, 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 a all the mountain lakes. They pull all the water. Douglas, Cherokee. They pull all the water down in the wintertime, then they fill it back up in the summer. Yeah. But on here, when you change it, all your depths change. Okay. In other words, if Instead of being next to the bank and it's dropped 30 feet, and it says 30 feet deep in the sea road, this would say zero. Okay. That's the advantage yeah. of having your map. That's awesome. We go out here to set up. If you forget a lot of the stuff that I just told you, or out there after a while, you're saying, gosh, I don't even know what I've done. If you'll come down here to something, restore defaults, this puts it back in factory settings. It erases no waypoints, no routes, all it does is put it back to where it comes from the factory. When you do it, restore default. Now, if you want to go back and start all over, you hit yes. Since I'm setting your unit up, I'm going to say no. So everything that I put in there stays. Right. Now. Now, can you save this setup? Yeah, once you cut this on and off, it stays. Okay. Here's the big deal. You see right here on the user mode. Right. If it ever says normal, Put it back into advance. Okay. Advance allows you to do more stuff. So now I'm on advance, so it means I'm gonna come down here and notice it's over digital overlay, or I can put boxes. So if I want to put every single thing, a readout that I want, I can put boxes, or it's just gonna give me, like on this unit, it just gives me the overlay. It just gives you some things that you want. Now, if you want everything, let's come on down here. Select my readout. All right. Now you tell me, depth's always your first one. Yeah. Most of the time, people like temperature. Temperature. Position. Now this little deal here tells you if you're saving some stuff to show somebody, you might want to well, cut turn that, that off, off if you don't want them to know what you're fishing for. <laughs> and that's where you do it right, right there. Here's your time. Uh huh. There's your speed. There's your voltage. If you don't want something, simply go in here, cut it off. Find it where it's cut off. Hey, I didn't want voltage. Come over here and find it. Cuts it off. All right, we'll just leave it alone. Now we exit out. We come down here. So you got to come down here and find out exactly where you are, where you're at. Uh, this happens to be set on Eastern Time Zone. Yeah, that's where we're at. All right, that's where we're at. Now, daylight savings time's off. Okay. So when we change the daylight savings time, you come back here and just cut it on, and your time will change an hour. Okay. okay. So pretty well everything else is pretty well set. There's a lot of stuff that you'll never use, but it's in there. You come to views. Something about views. If there's too many views, hide them. Like sonar view you want visible, down image you want visible. Maybe you don't have 360 on there, it won't come up. Question for you while you're running through those. These don't come with a 360 out, out Right. Off. Okay, you have that. That's you an add-on. Add okay, that. all right. Yeah, we can but, turn that off. But if you want it off, see if it wasn't on there, because this is a simulation, visible, yeah. it's hidden. Okay. Now, there's some things that my son gets a hold of it. You got three preset buttons. Yep. Okay. Those are screens you can go to like a, your radio. Quickly want to go to that channel, you go here. But if there's too many views and it's not, you don't want them, just hide them. But you didn't take them out of the unit, you just didn't have to go through as many views to get there. So just take them out and hide them. Uh, every view, you've got every view possible in here. Uh, now, I'm going to show you one. If you want to know without cutting your unit off how to know your latest update or what update or what hours you've got on it, you come in to self-test, it's automatically hit. I'll come up there and unhide it. Now, everything that's in this unit, as far as your hours, your serial number, and what updates you've got in it, this right there will show you that. So I'm gonna leave it on there so he can, we'll go back there and look at it. After that, there's not a lot of other stuff in views. Now, accessories, something that you've got on here is your mark button. If you ever wanna save screenshots, you come down here, 
the screenshots is all. If I cut this on, every time that I hit my mark button, it will save a picture of what was on that screen. So if you want to show somebody something later on, you can take your SD card out and put it in the computer and show it. But also, as long as you leave a card in there, everything on this particular screen that we've got right here will show you what you say. So anything that you've got on that SD card, plus now instead of a blue waypoint, you'll be a camera showing that waypoint. It means when you scroll on over that camera, it's going to show you that picture at that waypoint. We definitely want to turn that on. So after that, the only other thing that I'll tell you is when you're going through views, if you go by view and say, oops, I want to come back to that, if you hit exit, it just backs up. Okay. Now a lot of people say that screen's too bright, especially early in the morning. If you go in here and hit your own button, it pops up, I can come down here to the light and I can hear this thing. That's, That's just one button. of them little shortcut buttons. Yeah. Now, if anything else you want to change, you do it, you exit, you go back. That's about all. It, now, I'll tell you, except these three buttons are quick sets. Yep, they're right. already set. That's my side imaging. That's regular 2D and my side imaging. And this is my 2D and my map. That's the same screens I usually run. I use this for running, so I know where I'm at on the lake. Up here, you see that little arrow? That means that's the menu for that screen. So now, if I come in here, I'm starting to zoom up. So what I've done is I've zoomed up on my map to see where I'm at on the lake. And that's about all it is to it. After that, go fishing. All right. Well, I'll tell you what, Fuzzy, I appreciate your time today. You. First fish I, I catch on this thing, I'm going to dedicate to you, all right? I appreciate it. I appreciate your time.